J.K. Rowling's epic book series is so magical, it'd be impossible to include it all on screen. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 differences between the Harry Potter novels and movies. Hmm, difficult, very difficult. For this list, we're looking at characters, stories, or pretty much anything else that was left out when the Harry Potter books became movies. Since we're talking about major plot points and characters, you might want to put your extendable ears away and do some light reading and watching. This is light. Ex spoiler armis, and by that we mean spoiler alert. Ron, you spoiled everything! Number 10. Book, there's a sphinx in the maze. Movie, no sphinx. The Harry Potter novels offer some great riddle solving that unfortunately didn't make the final cut. For example, in The Philosopher's Stone, Hermione has to solve a potions riddle to help Harry confront Professor Quirrell. Tell me, what do you see? J.K. Rowling once again threw a puzzle at her characters in The Goblet of Fire, but here Harry has no help, trapped alone in a hedge maze during the Triwizard Tournament. While the movie version only has Harry escaping from some scary shrubbery, the book's maze houses menacing creatures. One such creature is a sphinx that will only let Harry pass if he correctly answers a riddle. This character inclusion reminded readers of Rowling's background in mythology, while also suggesting that maybe Hermione rubbed off on Harry. Me, books, and cleverness are more important things. Friendship and bravery. And Harry, just be careful. Number 9. Book, Animagi are explained. Movie, Animagi are not really explained. Please, sir, an Animagus is a wizard who elects to turn into an animal. A werewolf has no choice. Do you know the difference between a werewolf and an animagus? If you've only seen the third Harry Potter movie, Hermione's explanation is all you get. However, the books go into greater detail about the process of turning into an animal and the laws surrounding it. We also learn that James Potter, Sirius Black, and Peter Pettigrew became unregistered animagi to accompany Remus Lupin whenever he transformed into a werewolf, and that they created the Marauder's Map to help sneak out of Hogwarts. Messrs. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs are proud to present the Marauder's Map. We had so much. So if you didn't read the books, it might have been confusing when Pettigrew became a rat, Sirius a dog, and even McGonagall a cat though you know she did it legally. That was bloody brilliant! Oh, thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. Understanding what an Animagus is even gives significance to the Potter family's Patronuses, since James became a stag. No, my Patronus is a stag. Right, yeah. That was... Number 8. Book. Peter Pettigrew is strangled to death by his silver hand. Movie. Peter Pettigrew does not die. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you. Remember when Voldemort gives Peter Pettigrew a shiny new hand after he sacrifices his real one to revive his master? The books prove that this wasn't just a gift. As Harry and company try to escape from Malfoy Manor in the Deathly Hallows, Pettigrew is all that stands in their way. Let our guard get back. He briefly stops himself from killing the son of his best friend, but this proves to be his downfall, as he's then strangled to death by his own hand since he defied his master Voldemort. In the movie, Pettigrew is easily put out of commission by Dobby, who only disarms him, but does not kill him. Guess some things are too dark for the silver screen, huh? Who gets his wand? Number 7. Book. Harry replaces the Elder Wand in Dumbledore's tomb. Movie. Harry breaks the Elder Wand and throws it away. He killed a wizard with whom he had once quarreled. Drunk with the power that the Elder Wand had given him, he bragged of his invincibility. Here's a moment that made all Potter fans gasp. In both the book and the film, Harry is revealed as the Elder Wand's true master after he disarms its previous master, Draco Malfoy. It's what he does with it in the movie that irks Potterheads to this day. After the Battle of Hogwarts in the final film, Harry does what probably no one with an all-powerful wand would do. He snaps it in two and throws it off a bridge. In the book, however, Harry uses it to fix his own wand, which he always preferred, then returns it to Dumbledore's grave so that when Harry finally dies, the wand will have no allegiance to anyone else. Well, that makes more sense. She thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Okay, sorry. Um... Kidding. Number 6. 
Book House elves are mistreated, but play vital roles. Movie House elves are mostly unimportant, unseen. Why do you wear that thing, Dobby? This, sir, uh, tis a mark of the house elves' enslavement. Harry Potter deals with many issues, but one that's glossed over in the movies is the mistreatment of house elves. We do see Dobby as a slave to the Malfoys. I'll deal with you later. But he has much more purpose than the movies let on. For example, he's the one who gives Harry the gillyweed in the Goblet of Fire, not Neville. You're sure about this, Neville? Absolutely. For an hour. Most likely. Something else the movies don't show is that Dobby and other house elves are given proper employment in the Hogwarts kitchens. Plus, the films don't include the female house elf Winky, who cares for Barty Crouch Jr., gets fired, and is then employed at Hogwarts. Man, house elves deserve more credit. Just ask the creator of Spew, the Society for the Promotion of Elfish Welfare, Hermione Granger. That is the general idea. It's brilliant. Number 5. Book Harry and Hermione Miss Ron Movie Harry and Hermione Slow Dance to Cheer Up When Harry, Ron, and Hermione search for the Deathly Hallows, their relationship slowly becomes strained. Ron in particular is affected, as he has to wear the Horcrux locket, which forces his most negative feelings to surface. You think I don't know how this feels? Oh, you don't know how it feels! Your parents are dead! You have no family! Stop! Stop! Ron soon can't deal with it, and leaves his two friends alone. In The Deathly Hallows Part 1, Harry and Hermione are wallowing in despair while listening to the radio, when a soothing song pops on. The two then begin to dance with each other, sharing a brief moment of cheerfulness they hadn't felt for quite some time. Chains, but, now I'm free. but as the song finishes, it's back to reality. This scene doesn't appear at all in the books, but is a nice moment between friends. Number 4. Book Voldemort Dies Like a Human Movie Voldemort Dies Like a Supernatural Creature In both the books and the movies, Harry and Voldemort are having their final duel, and their wands connect as they done in the Goblet of Fire. Voldemort uses the Elder Wand, even though it doesn't have allegiance to him, but doesn't realize that he's actually fighting its real master. The Elder Wand refuses to harm Harry, and rebounds Voldemort's killing curse back towards him. The book does not afford Voldemort the grandiose death he wanted. Instead, he dies like a human, in a purposefully anticlimactic way. In the movie, however, Voldemort just sort of breaks apart and fades away, which is visually stunning, but doesn't have that same finality, and affords him more power than he deserves. Number 3. Book Peeves, Ludo Bagman, Charlie Weasley, and Teddy Lupin All Exist Movie Peeves, Ludo Bagman, Charlie Weasley, and Teddy Lupin Don't Appear Why, it's Potty Wee Potter! Oh, I'm Peeves, Potter, and you better watch out for me! When any book series is given the film treatment, some characters don't make the cut, because they interfere with the pace, but we missed a few. Peeves the Poltergeist, a pesky ghoul who pulls pranks on staff and students at Hogwarts, is a fan favorite. The Ministry of Magic's head of the Division for Magical Games, Ludo Bagman, appears in the Goblet of Fire book, but not the film. On screen, the Weasley family's second eldest, Charlie, is only mentioned and shown in pictures. My parents decided to go to Romania to visit my brother Charlie. He's studying dragons there. But an especially upsetting omission is Teddy Lupin, son of Remus Lupin and Nymphadora Tonks. By the way, wait till you hear the news. Remus oh, and I... All right, we have time for a cozy catch up later. This book character represents the tragic cyclical nature of the series, as he's orphaned in the Battle of Hogwarts and essentially becomes his generation's Harry. And Remus, your son. Others will tell him what his mother and father died for. One day, he'll understand. They even cast the character. You can have this new life, you know, where you're doing your own thing and you're suddenly independent. Number two, book. Various characters visit St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies. Movie, St. Mungo's never appears. Yep, even the wizarding world needs a hospital. 
In the books, several wizards are injured enough to be sent to St. Mungo's, including Arthur Weasley after he's attacked by Nagini. Some patients are there permanently, like Gilderoy Lockhart, who suffers from a backfired memory charm. Bet you forgot about him. Who are you? Um, Ron Weasley. Really? And, uh, who, who am I? Other long-term residents are Neville's parents, who were tortured into insanity with the Cruciatus Curse by Voldemort's minions. Neville's parents. They suffered a fate worse than death, you ask me. This scene not only shows the terrible effects of the First Wizarding War, it also fleshes out Neville's tragic backstory, highlighting the fact that the Longbottom's history of defying the Dark Lord may have made Neville the Chosen One instead of Harry. But it may have just been too hard to watch when the Longbottoms don't recognize their own son. I'm quite proud to be their son. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Ah, oh, there you are, Harry. Hermione and Ron are already at my death day party. It's a firebolt. It's the fastest broom in the world. For me. But who sent it? No one knows. This came with it. How dare you steal that car! Number one, book. Half-Blood Tom Riddle was conceived thanks to a love potion. Movie, Voldemort's parentage is largely glossed over. The bones of the father unwillingly given. When Dumbledore takes Harry through Voldemort's past in the movies, we learn a little about how he went from orphan boy to the Dark Lord. I can make things move without touching them. I can make animals do what I want without training them. I can make bad things happen to people who are mean to me. The books, however, tell the full story. Voldemort is the son of the witch Merope Gaunt and the muggle Tom Riddle. Merope fell in love with Tom Riddle, and with the help of a love potion, she married him and became pregnant. Rowling has said it's important that Voldemort was conceived as a result of force rather than real love, as it explains why he cannot feel love. Merope eventually stopped using the potion, hoping Riddle actually loved her. Unfortunately, he abandoned both Merope and their unborn son. This explains Voldemort's hatred of muggles, as well as half-bloods, as he himself is one. You're Voldemort. Surely you didn't think I was going to keep my filthy muggle father's name. Do you agree with our list? Were we put under a confundus charm when we made this? Harry! I protest! Harry, you put your name in a couple of the fire. No, sir. You asked one of the oldest students to do it for you? No, sir. You're absolutely sure? Yes, sir. For more magical top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I think it is clear that we can expect great things from you. After all, he who must not be named. <laughs>